The infilling of the Holy Spirit is very helpful. For me, after Carlos and Condé lay hands on me, I experienced the great love of God. And then whenever I pray, I can experience the presence of God, the power of God, and the love of God, and the joy of the Lord. It's wonderful. It changed my life. And I have great motivation to serve God. And also, I have helped many people to be revived. That when I pray for them, their life is revived. And also, God gave me many, many teachings. And then, when I share this teaching with people, people grow. So I hope that we're all hunger for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Now, some people might have experienced the Holy Spirit, but we can all be filled with the Holy Spirit more and more. Now, what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? First, have a very intimate relationship with God. It means an intimate relationship with God. Second, it means turn away from all sins. Hate sins because sins are destructive. Three, follow God's will and the Great Commission that will obey God and, and uh, do His Great Commission to preach the Gospel and teach people to observe everything Jesus has taught and dedicate our lives to God and doing things for God's glory and not our own glory. And people who are filled with the Holy Spirit can experience God's presence and work anytime we pray and can help people to experience God and His work. So that, that this I define, define the, the uh, infilling of the Holy Spirit, that this person can experience God anytime when he prays. And then also when he prays for other people, can, he can help other people to experience the Holy Spirit. Now that is infilling to a certain extent. Some people are filled to a certain extent, but they still have, doesn't have this instant infilling. But, you know, there's, there are different degrees of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Some people are not filled to that level that anytime they pray, they immediately ex experience the Holy Spirit. So it, we all need to grow. Okay, so help people to experience the Holy Spirit and serve God with strong anointing. So I just explained that already. Ways that people can experience the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> peace, Jesus said, peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. And burdens removed. All you who are labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. And body in rest and comfort. That therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope that the body will feel comfort, will rest in hope. And love, Romans 5.5, 5, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us, that the Holy Spirit brings love to us. Inner healing, that He heals the brokenhearted. So we can experience God in these different ways. And physical healing, Isaiah 53.5, by His stripes we are healed and demons being driven out. Mark 16, 17. In my name, they will cast out demons. Now, physically experiencing the swing of the body, or falling, or power. In John, Revelation 1, 17, when John saw Jesus, he fell to the ground as dead. And then Acts 9, 4, when Saul fell to the ground, he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Daniel, while well, heard the voice, the sound of the words, I was in a deep sleep on my face, with my face to the ground. <clears throat> and Second Chronicle 5.14, so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. And there were 120 priests who could not stand, who could not serve with the presence of God. So that strong feeling is, strong in feeling is, uh, uh, would cause a person to fall down. But when it's not so strong, then people will sway. You, if you love God, you notice that your body might be swaying. And then Jesus promised to give us the power of the Holy Spirit for evangelism. So you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and to all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And God wants to fill all people with the Holy Spirit. 
and give them spiritual guidance. Now, some people say, well, this is only for the, some people. But actually, the Bible says it's for all people. <clears throat> In Acts 2.17, And it shall come to pass the last day, says God, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. On all flesh. Of course, this means Christians. He wants all Christians to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. So God wants all Christians to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then they can prophesy or see visions or dream dreams. <clears throat> and Jesus promised to give us miracles. <clears throat> And according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, <clears throat> the spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit include supernatural gifts. And here we see that this uh, Jesus promised supernatural gifts for evangelism to the end of the world. Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So this is for evangelism to the whole world. He who believes, in, believes and is baptized shall be saved. And who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. So that's the first miracle. They will speak with new tongues. And another miracle. Now for speaking tongue, I would say to people, guide people to love God, to worship God, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then when they start to speak in new tongues, that's great. And we must tell people, don't imitate speaking in tongues. Don't follow other people speaking in tongues. Some people thought they just follow other people. And some people, I've heard that some people just tell people, follow me, follow me, try. They will say, say, uh, uh, say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah very fast and then it will become tongues. That is not tongues. That's not speaking in tongues. It's not something we can imitate or force upon people. You know, because when that happens, they really don't know whether there's tongues or whether there's just making some sound. So it has to come naturally when we worship God and love God. And that comes. Now, if a person experiences love and joy and power, all this without speaking in tongues, he's already experienced the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues is only one way people experience the Holy Spirit. It's not the only way. So don't push that. Some people push that and say that that's the only sign. Actually, the Bible says there are other signs. So don't have to push that. And when people imitate speaking in tongues, they might not be changed at all. They, they have no change in their life and they thought they are changed. And they're not changed. And that can cause a lot of problems that people are not speaking in tongues and they're just babbling and they thought they are filled with the Holy Spirit and, and they can become proud and say, I speak in tongues and, and that can cause confusion in the church. Okay, so, so let it come naturally and tell people don't imitate, don't try to speak in tongues. Now for me, the first day that I start tongues, speaking in tongues come to me, it was like this. There was an evangelist speaking to another person because this other person, uh, he speaks in tongue. He just said, speak in tongue. And, and the other person started to speak in tongue. And the moment he said that, my mouth, my tongue started to vibrate. And that's how I started. When he said that to another person, suddenly it just started in me. So, um, it will start naturally when we love God. And they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Now, this is, I think, is for time of um, persecution that we're thrown in the, to serpents or have, we are forced to drink poison, and we ask God to heal us. And also, they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So, now how many people have this authority to lay hands on people? is everyone who believe. These signs will follow those who believe. But of course we need to be trained. Need to be trained. Because the evil spirit 
also are similar to the Holy Spirit in certain ways. Now the difference is very great. The Holy Spirit will bring us peace and joy and love and repentance. The evil spirit will not. The evil spirit will bring trouble, will bring the desire to die and pain and suffering. But the evil spirit will also cause people to sway, can also cause people to fall down. So just falling down doesn't show that it is from the Holy Spirit because the, whole, the evil spirit came from God also because they are the fallen angels. They came from God. The, God created the angels and then some angels fell and became Satan and, uh, and uh, demons. And also, the Holy Spirit can be passed on by the laying of hands. The evil spirit can also be passed on by laying on of hands. So, people who have evil, evil spirits should not lay hands on people. They should build up the relationship with God and clean their life first uh, before they can lay hands on people. And God has promised to give us supernatural spiritual gifts. It's through the Holy Spirit. That one, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that gives to us. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Word of wisdom is the person able to speak words of wisdom that, that he has wisdom to handle problems. Words of knowledge, it could be biblical knowledge or it could be knowledge about a person that the person origin, uh, that and a person originally do not know about the person. But when he has this gift of word of knowledge, he knew that this person is suffering from something. He knew specifically that is word of knowledge. And then faith. Faith, now this is not talking about saving faith. This is faith for miracles. And then gifts of healing and working on miracles, different working. Uh, like in the last days, people might be able to walk on water to run away from the enemy or to command the mountains to move uh, or to, uh, to be taken away like um, Philip, he was taken away after he baptized the eunuch. And then prophecy and then discerning of spirit. Discern what kind of sp evil spirit that some people have evil spirit and they can tell what kind of evil spirit is that. Another interpretation of tongues, uh, that they can interpret the tongues. And 2.17, we just said that, uh, read that earlier, that God said, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh and your daughters shall prophesy, your sons and daughters, and the young men shall see visions, old men shall dream dreams, and and on my ser men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. So the Bible has tell us that we can prophesy, but of course it's only people who have received this gift of prophecy. So don't force it. Now there are many false prophets. There are many people who just say want to build up themselves by saying that they can prophesy without testing that I've seen more problems caused by that. So we must be very, very careful. Uh, if we receive this gift, we must discern it and have people test it many, many times before it's used on people. Now, to be filled with the Holy Spirit is very important to worship in spirit and in truth. That the soul includes the mind, the will, and the feelings. The mind when worship with the mind, that means the mind agrees with the Bible and God's will. I agree that God is good. The Bible is good. The Bible is right. God is right in everything. God is almighty. God is loving. And will. I decide to follow God and obey God in every single way. Because that will bring, bring blessings to my whole life. And feelings. Bring up, build up positive feelings toward God. Now, I have... I really like God. God is good. I count all the blessings of God. I always like God. 
And I hope that you all will always count the blessings of God and delight in God all the time. And then when you delight in God already, you're close to being filled with the Holy Spirit. Always delight in God. God is so good. God is so good. And then worship God with the whole spirit. It's the whole inner being. Worship God with the mind. God, you're good. The Bible is right. And God is right in every way. And I give my body and my life to God. And I like God. I desire God. I hunger for God. I'm happy with God. Five kinds of prayer to build up the relationship with God. Prayer of grace to declare the grace of God upon us, that He's blessing us. So we'll be like this, God is blessing us, God is with me, God is in front of me and behind me, and He's laying His hand upon me, and He wants to bless us all. Thank you, Jesus, you're loving us. So it's declaring God what He's doing to us. And then prayer of worship is from us to God. I love you, Lord, I worship you, I adore you, I need you. Now I put in words, that with more feelings. I need you. I hold on to you. I like you. So I, I have words like this. Interactive prayer. That when we pray, we know that God is also responding. God is happy. So we can say, when I'm praying to you, Lord, I know that you, you're happy and you're listening to us and you're blessing us. Thank you, Jesus. I know that you respond to us because you promise to respond to our prayer. You listen to our prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then we know that God is happy with us when we pray, when we pray sincerely, then we can be very happy. Thank you, Lord, you're happy with us. You're happy with us. You're filling us with the Holy Spirit. You're responding to our prayer. Thank you, Lord. And pr prayer of dedication. Lord, I dedicate my whole life to you. I give my whole life to you. And listening to God, that we have time, that we just quiet ourselves and think about God. Just think about God and see if God give us some thoughts or think about some Bible verses and see if God give us some ideas, some thoughts. Now if we have this, we can write this down or ask our pastor whether this comes from God or not to verify that. If it's godly and it's helpful uh, and it's not from our thinking, then it's from God. Now, how to pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit? First, we need to build a strong relationship with God and turn away from all sins because sins can bring evil spirit. And we can pray and sing to lead people to believe that God is loving you, loving them, and helping them to love God and don't need to shout. So we can say, God is loving us now. God is with us now. That is true because the Bible says that, that God dwells in the praise of Israel. So He's with us right now. It's true when we love God. And we can lay hands on people. Don't push people. Falling doesn't help people. Experiencing God helps people. So then we can lay hands on them. Help them to enjoy God. And we can ask them if they have experienced the Holy Spirit to help them remember the experience so that every time they pray, they go back to that experience again. Experience the Holy Spirit can help people in these ways. <clears throat> First, to experience God and his, and his work. To appreciate God and believe in God. To see that, wow, God is so real. So it can be used to help Christians to appreciate God and to help non-Christians to believe in God when they experience the Holy Spirit. And to experience inner healing, to heal the soul and bodily healing and to build up love and zeal for God, and to drive out demons, and to guide people in their lives, and to receive spiritual gifts and prophetic words. Now, we need to build on that. In order to have prophetic words, we must have more time listening to God, waiting on the Lord. And then when the thoughts come to us, we'll verify that. And with time, gradually, it comes more and more Then we know that, uh, that we have received this gift. To lay hands on people to experience comfort, healing, exorcism, that's driving out demons, and transformation of life. So we can pray for people to drive out demons or to change their life, uh, to uh, experience God. 
and to serve God and raise up people to serve God. So laying our hands is a way to serve God. And then we can raise up people who can serve God also. So how can we be filled with the Holy Spirit continually? Repent and turn away from all sins. Love and follow the Bible. Believe that God wants to fill us. He wants to fill us. For spending long hours loving God and hungering for God. Now this is very key. Spend long time. And also when we're doing other things, we'll be loving God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now when we are thinking, we can still pray. The simple prayer is just to like God. Delight in God. Oh, just like God. And then, so when I'm preaching, I can also be delighting in God. And I'm praying too. So I can just delight in God. That I like God. That is also a kind of prayer. So spend long time. That is the key to, to being filled with the Holy Spirit. And especially with a group of people. Then you can feel the power become stronger and stronger. You can feel power pushing people. Not the hand pushing people. But power pushing people swaying. That, that, is, that comes from the power of the Holy Spirit. And also, being filled with the Holy Spirit means we obey God in every area, especially the great commi commandment and great commission. And it would need, we need to take care of problems in our lives. If a person has different problems, he cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. And laying on of hands by a Spirit-filled person and sp Spirit-filled meetings are helpful, but we still need to spend time praying ourselves. Okay, so that's for all for the instruction of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray now. Please stand up and relax and see if you can experience the peace of God coming to you. See if you can feel the swaying of the body. See if you can feel the joy or the power or the love of God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, every time when we say something, now you can say after me. And you can, it's like from your soul, your words go to God. Ah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's like from your soul, you pour out your prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. You're so wonderful. God is so wonderful. God is so good. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Father, we need you. Father, we adore you. We need you. <clears throat> we hold on to you. You are wonderful, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Take away our burdens. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you. Hallelujah. We need you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Come fill us. Our lives belong to you. We belong to you. We give our lives to you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Lord. We love you. We adore you. We love you. We adore you. We need you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Now you can cry out <coughs> from your heart. Hallelujah. From your soul, you might feel joy coming through you. Ah, <laughs> cry out! It's like any kind of burning come out from your soul, or your soul flies to God. Ah, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, hallelujah! You all say that together, loudly. Ah, hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Ah, hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, please keep your eyes closed and notice if you have experienced anything in the prayer. If you have, please tell your leader and you can send a message in the group. Okay? God bless you all. God be with you. And I hope you spend a long time praying, loving God, and you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit more and more. Okay? Mm -hmm.